The thing here on the left is a thing called an ACL, short for Access Control List. Here's how to use it and here's why your application probably needs one as well. So ACLs are used extensively in applications where multiple users have different permissions. So let's start with this example. Let's say user A is an admin and admins should be able to access an admin page, of course, and they should also be able to access the normal dashboard that everyone sees. But the customer, on the other hand, user B, should only have access to the dashboard. They shouldn't be able to go to the admin page and modify, for example, products if it's an e-commerce website. At the end, you're gonna end up with this kind of code. So if the route is admin and the role is not an admin, so everything except for an admin, then we're gonna return a 403, which stands for forbidden, and we're not gonna let any other type of a user to access the admin page. Okay, this probably works, but imagine we have maybe 20 other types of users. Let's say we have an external user type of a user, and let's say we have a partner, and you can imagine that this code is probably gonna grow a lot, become a spaghetti, and you have to repeat this if statement in a lot of places. So this is something we wanna avoid, and this is what ACLs are gonna help us with, okay? So let's imagine a normal scenario where the client is trying to authenticate and authorize. So ACLs are a part of the authorization step, the second step, but let's go over both of them. So let's say our client is trying to log in if they aren't logged in already. And upon login, the server is gonna return a JWT token, for example. The JWT token is gonna contain something called a role. So in the payload, it's encrypted, it's gonna contain a role. And the role is gonna be sent in the header or every time we send the JWT token to the server. So the server is gonna be able to know which kind of a role the client has. And then, for example, if the JWT was provided by an identity provider, if we're using some kind of a third party software, or maybe we just store our users in our own database, even easier, we're gonna be able to see whether, because we also have the ACLs in our database, we're gonna be able to see what a user with this kind of role is allowed to do in our application. Okay, so the ACL is basically gonna look something like this. It's basically a JSON file, but also can be a YAML file, and it consists of different parts. Let's go over the parts and to basically have a better overview. So the parts are gonna be as following. So we're gonna have a group, or we're gonna be able to work on a user basis. So let's say John Doe has a permission to the admin page, someone else doesn't have, have access to the admin page, but rather to the dashboard and a product page and so on. Or we can simply take the user and make it a part of a group like this. So in here, our users, every user is gonna be a part of some kind of a group, okay? This is much easier. And this is called RBAC, role-based access control, okay? If we do, if we only work with users and our application is small, so we literally have maybe two, three types of users, we can go with an AC, with a classical ACL. This is what the classical ACL would probably look like, only users, okay? If we go with a role-based access control, then we have something like this where we have different types of roles, okay? Group, I'm gonna explain why it's called group here, but basically guest, customer, and admin. And this is where we have here, so group. And role is basically another word for it. Every group or user is gonna have per a list of permissions, basically an array of permissions, and every permission consists of a resource and an action. So let's take a look at uh, at an example ACL. Let's say we have a group called employee, which is also a role employee, you can call it that way. An employee has permissions. As I said, it's an array. And one of the permissions is gonna say resource. Resource is basically a web page, okay? It can also be a route. Uh, basically, ACLs can be used in many different places, not only web applications, but also operating systems, routers, okay? Literal physical routers. We're gonna say an employee can access the intranet, okay? By methods post, as we all know, get and put, and you can see that there's no delete, so the employee is not able to delete anything from the intranet, probably a good idea. And we have an action called allow. So after defining all of this, you can say either allow, so we can access all of that, or deny, we cannot access all of these methods in the array, okay? And also, sometimes you want to be more granular 
and actually include some attributes. Let's say only if the role of the um, person or the user is not only employee, but also a partner, or if the department of the of this particular user is HR and they are working in a day shift. And this is going to be an ABAC, attribute-based access control. So this is more granular. So it starts with a slow or smaller application where you're going to have a user-based access control. It's called ACL. You can build on top of an ACL, make it a role-based access control like this, and you can even build on top of that and make it an attribute-based access control. Okay, let's take a look at uh, an example application and um, how it's probably going to work. So in this node application, we're going to have the following thing. We're going to use the library called Express ACL. And I'm actually going to start the server just like this node index and Express ACL servers running on port 3000. What we're going to have here is basically our routes here. So route admin, we also have route dashboard. And let's go to this uh, client. Uh, we try to pretend that we are an admin. So of course, we're usually going to send this role in the JWT token. But here for the simplicity, I'm sending it as a query parameter, or I'm going to say I'm an admin, and I'm trying to access the dashboard, obviously, I can access the dashboard. If I'm an admin, and I try to access the admin page, of course, I can also do that. But if I'm an admin, no, wait, if I'm a customer, and I try to access the admin page, uh, this time the access is denied, customers are not allowed to access the admin page. And how do, do we know that? Well, it's pretty simple. We're using this Express ACL. This Express ACL library is reading this JSON file that we have declared here. And we see that the customer can only access the dashboard. Okay, the customer doesn't have a resource uh, like the following, like this, where it says admin. In this case, we would have been able to access it, but currently we don't have it. That's why we're not able to. Okay, and guest can access the dashboard, but only with the get bit and nothing else. Just to show the rest of the index.js, we have a router here, and this is basically a middleware where we taking the role, as I said, from the query parameters, usually you would take it from the JWT token, and you put it inside the user object, and you we can sign it, sign a fake JWT token, and later, uh, actually use it. So we're gonna basically verify the token. And as soon as this is done, our Express ACL library is gonna kick in automatically and define um, basically what we have access to and whatnot. How, you ask? Well, we have another middleware, and this is where we declare our third part library. Now, talking about third part library, there are many of them, and I'm gonna talk about it in literally a minute. But just to finish the idea here, uh, the fact is that ACLs don't only live on the back end, they can also be used by the client. So your front end application, okay, react, angular, whatever you have there. So as soon as the server validates the role of the user, and they have the list of ACLs, because we literally have stored them in a database, or you can actually also have them as a static file, you're going to send this ACL, ACL.json to the client so that the client is also aware. The client already knows its role, okay, let's say the role is a customer, it's not an admin. So a customer is not going to see the admin page, which means as soon as you know this, your role and you have the ACLs and you know what you have access to and whatnot, you can actually guard your routes, for example, or show elements and hide elements. So this is not only good for the server, but the client can use the ACLs as well. Okay, now I hope you understood the topic, but let's quickly talk about this Express ACL package that I used in my application example, you're going to find the code on GitHub. Here's a new one. So all the pages, all the packages for Node.js are kind of mediocre. Okay, this Express ACL is no longer maintained. Okay, there's another one called Node Caspian. I haven't used that. So this looks more or less maintained. So if you want to have ACLs, probably go for Node Caspian. They are a bit different in their APIs and usage. Uh, but you're gonna probably understand how to use it by looking at the examples. We have another one castle and we have access control also unmaintained. As you can see, it's been a long time since it's been updated. So probably don't use that. What I'm trying to say is a Java and Spring Boot have their spring security a a with a baked in ACL. I'm pretty sure .NET has something similar as well. But unfortunately, in the JavaScript world, in the Node world, um, we are a bit behind and all the libraries are re we're using are really outdated. This is not good. So I would suggest to either go with this one or go with this one if you want to have an ACL. And actually, I already uh, searched it on Reddit. Most of 
the people are using these two libraries. So this is what I would also recommend. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, smash like and subscribe for more useful videos like this. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.